Hello and welcome to Josh Anderson Art channel on YouTube. Continuing in a series of daily drawings of nostalgic cartoons from my childhood. I grew up in the 80s and 90s, um, but a lot of the cartoons we watched were reruns from the 60s, 70s time. So Yogi Bear was a cartoon. There was a lot of different versions of Yogi Bear. Um, I think he was kind of mainly a 60s cartoon, but he spent a lot of different decades. And there's a lot of versions of him. So it was actually really hard to pick the right one to draw. Because I'm not really sure. Like, I actually, the list I'm going from is a compilation I made on this YouTube channel called Vintage Retro Memories. Um, and it was just one time I slowly compiled a list of all the shows I could remember. And actually, the, the next one on the list is Yogi's Space Race. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason to the, to the list, what, you know, what goes next or whatever, but... When I looked at Space Race, I started to dig in and find out, like, there's a lot. <laughs> there's, like, Yogi's Gang. There's Yogi's Ark, which I very slightly remember. And so it would actually be silly just to draw all these different Yogi's from the different shows and just draw one from the kind of the main Yogi show. And even that was kind of hard to find because he starts out, I think I saw him, on uh, Wikipedia that Yogi's first appearance was, he was in the Huckleberry Hound show. He was a side kicker or side character in that show. And then he became so popular, he outshined Huckleberry Hound, and got his own show. And so like that, the very early Yogi is a little bit different than the one I'm drawing here. He was a little more angular and even more simple. But I think this one, which was sometime in the mid 60s probably, is the most nostalgic for me. It's really hard to find. I mean, there's some black and white ones. And there's the really old angular versions out there. And then there's all this, I think in the 70s is when all the space race and Yogi's Ark and Yogi's Gang came about. And like maybe at some point I'll draw characters from those shows just to kind of represent my memory of them. But I figured first we'll just do Yogi himself and do the one I remember the most. we might come back and do all those different shows. There was also one called like Yogi's Bloopers or something like that, or Sp uh, Space Bloopers, which is even an offshoot of the Space Race show, which I don't remember that one at all. Finding that on YouTube just now is the first time I've ever seen that one. Kind of astounding once you try to like compile this stuff how much is out there like episodes even of just the yogi show and different iterations of yogi are kind of, it's kind of mind-blowing we're just talking about yogi bear not not even hanna-barbera hanna-barbera's productions are kind of even while the and Barbaric guys were still alive, like just the number of shows and the number of characters they cranked out is just, can't even wrap my brain around it. And then you pit them up against Disney and Warner Brothers and all of a sudden I start to understand why there were so, much, so many shows that my brother and I watched. There's a lot out there. Those are just the majors, and then you've got like the minor studios that cranked out things. And wow, there are no shortage of cartoons out there, which is fun for a cartoonist like me. Guilty bear 
I get this inked. I'm going to go over and scan it. And, uh, after I scan it, I'll color it with colored pencil and then snap a photo from Instagram. So if you'd like to see these finished drawings, follow me on Instagram. There should be a link up in the top of my YouTube channel. Yogi's a pretty simple character, so he's pretty quick to draw. But I found even in the most simple characters, you got to hand it to the animators because there are nuances that if you don't get them right, these characters don't look right. Like even his hat, I just, I think I got it a little too tall there. And so that doesn't look like kind of takes away from the yogi bear look because it's a really thin little hat he wears 50s dad hat i guess or whatever that is and also how a lot of times they're pretty good at staying on character even with different poses it's got to be tough Not, I'm not an animator. I've only tried animating simple things now and then. and It's tough to, even with my own characters, which I know better than anybody, and I've been drawing since I was a kid, like you try to draw them in slightly different poses, you realize how hard it is to keep a character looking like that character. A lot of days when I do this, I, I don't know, I must be drinking too much coffee or maybe haven't had lunch yet and I'm a little bit shaky and so that affects the smoothness of lines and it's kind of crazy how the eye can actually see, like you can notice little tiny mess ups. You might not even know what you're, you, like you're sensing something's not right. <laughs> Okay, there's Yogi Bear. Don't let it dry just a bit or my eraser will smear that ink. Eraser of choice is a gum eraser, kneaded eraser. Mainly because it doesn't leave a mess behind. 
and they last a bit longer than other types of erasers. The drawback is they do pick up a lot of that black from pencil lines and from your inking. Depending on the kind of ink you use and the paper, it may leave behind more ink and be soaked up by the eraser. Some some inks and papers soak up the ink, and so it doesn't get in the eraser as much. Let's see. This one's a, this is a regular magic rub. It says eraser, but it just leaves a mess behind. Starting to run out of ink. Also, this new sketchbook I have, kind of new, um, it's a very toothy paper, and so it it soaks up more of the ink. So you have to draw your lines slower, so you don't kind of get those faded lines. All right, I'm going to go scan this. Hang in there. Don't leave me. Right green for his hat. I always thought it's his hat's a bit of a sea green. And I don't quite have one that's green enough. It's a little more bluish, I think. So this will have to do. Let's make sure that scan came through. Once you color it, you never have that drawing again uncolored unless you scan it. So there it is. I do wish this was greener. Some people are really good at blending colored pencils. I haven't quite mastered that yet. I probably try not to lay it on so thick that first layer. Instagram has opened up a world of art to me, to all of us, through hashtags and stuff. And just, man, there are some incredible artists out there. It almost, it can drive you to one of two ways. It can intimidate you and make you want to crawl inside your shell and never do art again. Or it can inspire you and show you how much further you can grow in your art. And I'm trying to be that the ladder and try to be more inspired by stuff and not scared away. It's hard when you, I've told this story on other videos, like I grew up in a small town and when you're kind of a big fish in the pond, 
and people are always telling you, oh, you're such a great artist and you're the best drawer I, I know and all this stuff. And then you go on and that's, you know, elementary school. And then you go on to middle and high school and realize that you're not the best. There are other kids that are pretty good. And then when you go to college, you're like, oh, I'm not even that good. <laughs> And if that's what college was to to my small town mind, then the internet is even further. And it's just, and not just, I mean, really good artists, but lots of them, like, I'm just finding, like, every day there's new artists out there that I'm finding, and like, who will, like, like my drawings on, Instagram, so I go look at their stuff and just be like, wow, <laughs> way better than me. And the good thing about art is you don't have to be the best ever to do anything with your art. Like, there's a very wide range of taste publishers and things like that. You know, one of the things I aspire to be is a children's book illustrator. And I have a two-year-old and, and an eight-month-old, and we read to them every day. And then we check out tons of books from the library all the time. And so I'm always seeing all these great illustrators and stuff, and also some not-so-great ones. And, my wife and I are kind of always going like, how in the world did this one get published? Like the story's not that original or great. And the art's horrible. <laughs> and so like it, it kind of makes you go, I don't probably have a shot if I just try. So really I'm at the point of just trying to find the time because I've got some ideas for books i would like to write as well as illustrate um, so just getting those put together into like a presentable form is just time consuming especially when you have kids <laughs> if you're a parent you know what i'm talking about this brown is a little darker than yogi he's a little more of an orangey brown but too late for that. I also mentioned this in other videos that I'm trying to squeeze these out kind of in my lunch hour. And some of them, like the simpler characters, it's pretty easy to get one done in that time. The more complex characters. I did Optimus Prime one day, and that one took way longer. So as always, I apologize for the sound quality and the video quality of my videos. I just have this kind of really cheap little webcam that I'm using, it's all I have. And don't quite have the funds right now to, to get anything better. I also don't have the viewership to warrant me get like spending money on anything. It's chicken or the egg. Like maybe I would get more viewers if my videos were better quality. Or do I wait till I get more viewers to spend more money on better equipment? It's kind of like I know a lot of people, their livelihood is their YouTubes, YouTube channels and what they're doing, but mine, I'm still trying to like step out and sort of test the waters. And if I were to get lots and lots of viewers, it might be worth putting some time and money into. I'm still like not too happy with how dark I ended up coloring in. Maybe I can add a 
I'm going to wear the brown that I should have used. Show up this color. Then I get in a hurry and I start coloring over the lines and just making a mess out of it. If I were doing these commissioned or, or anything for money or something, I would probably, well, not probably, I would. I would spend a lot more time and take my time a lot more on them. So if you missed it before, the reason I'm doing these daily drawings is just to practice, keep myself up to speed with drawing, just drawing anything really. I'm realizing the older you get, the more responsibilities you have in life, and the more the things that you have to do sort of take up your time, like soak up all of your time, and before you realize that you're not drawing anymore. And as a kid, like that was all I ever did. I just drew and drew and drew and drew. If I had any free time and didn't have anything else going on, I was just drawing all the time. And then when you find you find that when you grow up, and life just gets in the way. If you don't program it into your day like this, I do still doodle on everything, like work meetings and stuff and on notes church notes but even that's kind of taking a back seat to things and stuff and like these daily drawings is really the most drawing I get done anymore these days all right I'm got in a hurry there and I'm colored pencil is not the best to erase <laughs> But there's Yogi Bear. And if you'd like to see the whole collection, find me on Instagram, Josh Anderson Art. You can see all the ones I've done so far. Smarter than the average bear.